Muammar Gaddafi, the enigmatic leader who shaped Libya's destiny. Muammar Gaddafi, a name that resonates with controversy, intrigue, and complex geopolitics, was a towering figure in the modern history of Libya and the broader Middle East. As the leader of Libya for over four decades, Gaddafi left an indelible mark on his nation and the world. In this video, we delve deep into the life, rise to power, ideologies, and ultimate downfall of Muammar Gaddafi. Early Life and Rise to Power Muammar Gaddafi, born on June 7, 1942, in a desert region near Sirte, Libya, was one of the most enigmatic and controversial figures in modern history. His early life and rise to power were marked by a blend of charisma, revolutionary zeal, and a drive to transform his country. Gaddafi's early life was deeply influenced by the political and social landscape of Libya under King Idris. Growing up in a Bedouin tent, he experienced firsthand the vast economic disparities and regional inequalities that plagued the nation. This exposure to the disparities in wealth and power fueled his revolutionary spirit and desire to challenge the existing order. Gaddafi's academic pursuits began at the University of Libya in Benghazi, where he studied law. It was during his university years that he became involved in political activism, joining a group of military officers who sought to overthrow the monarchy and establish a republic. This group would later form the Free Officers Movement, with Gaddafi emerging as a prominent member due to his charisma and leadership qualities. The turning point in Gaddafi's life came on September 1, 1969, when he and a group of young military officers, including his close friend Abu Bakr Yonis, staged a bloodless coup while King Idris was abroad for medical treatment. Gaddafi, only 27 years old at the time, assumed power as the chairman of the Revolutionary Command Council, making him the de facto leader of Libya. Gaddafi's initial years in power were marked by his efforts to consolidate his position and implement his vision for Libya. He embarked on a series of reforms aimed at nationalizing key industries, redistributing wealth, and eradicating corruption. These actions were accompanied by his ideological framework, which he outlined in the Green Book, a collection of his political theories that would become the basis for his unique political philosophy known as Jamahiriya. In 1973, Gaddafi nationalized Libya's oil industry, which had been under the control of foreign companies. This move allowed the country to gain greater control over its natural resources and revenue, but it also invited tension with Western powers and multinational corporations. Gaddafi's rule was characterized by a mix of authoritarian control and populist policies. On one hand, he suppressed political dissent, curtailed freedom of speech, and limited civil liberties. On the other hand, he used Libya's oil wealth to invest in education, healthcare, and infrastructure projects, raising the standard of living for many Libyans. The international arena witnessed Gaddafi's efforts to promote Pan-Africanism and Arab unity. He advocated for a united Africa, free from neocolonial influences, and supported liberation movements across the continent. Gaddafi's involvement in foreign affairs, however, often led to strained relations with Western powers. The United States, in particular, considered him a sponsor of terrorism due to his support for militant groups and his alleged involvement in various attacks. One of the most significant events during Gaddafi's rule was the 1986 US bombing of Libya in response to a nightclub bombing in Berlin, for which Libya was blamed. The airstrikes targeted Gaddafi's compound and resulted in civilian casualties. This event further strained Libya's relationship with the West and solidified Gaddafi's anti-imperialist stance. Gaddafi's rule continued for over four decades, marked by both internal and external challenges. His policies often led to internal dissent, and there were attempted coup plots and uprisings, all of which were suppressed with force. Despite his efforts to present himself as a champion of the people, Gaddafi's rule became increasingly authoritarian, with a cult of personality centered around him. His downfall came during the Arab Spring in 2011. Inspired by similar uprisings in neighboring countries, Libyans took to the streets demanding political reforms and an end to Gaddafi's rule. 
What began as peaceful protests escalated into a full-blown civil war, with NATO intervening on the side of the rebels. Qaddafi's forces clashed with opposition fighters, and the conflict rapidly spiraled into chaos. In October 2011, Qaddafi was captured and killed by rebel forces in his hometown of Sirte, marking the end of his 42-year rule. His death marked the end of an era for Libya, but the power vacuum that followed gave rise to further instability and conflict in the country. Muammar Gaddafi's early life was shaped by the stark socio-political realities of Libya, and his rise to power was fueled by a mix of revolutionary zeal, charisma, and a desire to challenge the existing order. While he implemented populist policies that improved the living standards of many Libyans, his rule was marred by authoritarianism, human rights abuses, and a confrontational foreign policy. Qaddafi's legacy remains a complex and contentious subject, with his transformative ambitions and controversial methods sparking debates about the true nature of his rule. The Libyan Revolution and Qaddafi's Vision Qaddafi's rise to power marked the beginning of a period of radical change in Libya. He introduced a political philosophy known as the Third International Theory, which aimed to forge a unique path for the nation, transcending both capitalism and communism. This philosophy, outlined in Qaddafi's Green Book, emphasized a direct democracy and a decentralized government structure. Qaddafi also sought to nationalize key industries and redistribute wealth to the Libyan people. While these ideas garnered initial support, his rule soon turned authoritarian, suppressing dissent and stifling political opposition. The 1970s and 1980s saw Qaddafi's Libya involved in several international conflicts, including supporting anti-Western movements and sponsoring acts of terrorism. At the heart of Qaddafi's vision for Libya was his aspiration to create a self-reliant, socialist state that operated outside the influence of superpowers. He believed in eradicating traditional political institutions and replacing them with his vision of a direct participatory democracy. Qaddafi envisioned a society where power was decentralized, and decisions were made at the grassroots level through people's committees. Economically, Qaddafi aimed to utilize Libya's vast oil wealth to benefit its citizens directly. He initiated programs to provide free education, healthcare, and housing to the Libyan population. He also sought to implement agricultural reforms to make Libya self-sufficient in food production. Qaddafi's ambitious ideas were rooted in his desire to create a society that was immune to the pitfalls of capitalism and the perceived exploitation by Western powers. Foreign Policy and Geopolitical Engagements Muammar Qaddafi, the enigmatic leader of Libya from 1969 to 2011, was known for his distinctive foreign policy and active geopolitical engagements that often drew both praise and criticism from the international community. Qaddafi's foreign policy was characterized by his revolutionary and anti-imperialist ideology, his efforts to challenge the Western dominance, and his pursuit of African and Arab unity. Over his four-decade rule, Qaddafi's foreign policy decisions had a significant impact on Libya's relations with other nations and on global geopolitics. Qaddafi came to power in 1969 through a military coup that ousted King Idris and established the Libyan Arab Republic. From the outset, he embraced a radical anti-imperialist stance, aiming to liberate Libya and other Arab nations from Western influence. One of Qaddafi's most prominent foreign policy initiatives was his promotion of his political philosophy known as the Third International Theory, outlined in his Green Book. This theory advocated for a form of direct democracy that rejected both capitalism and communism, aligning with Qaddafi's vision of a decentralized society free from traditional power structures. Qaddafi's relationship with the West was complex and often adversarial. He accused Western powers, particularly the United States and the United Kingdom, of neocolonialism and imperialism in the Arab world. His uncompromising stance led to numerous confrontations, including the expulsion of Western military bases from Libyan soil and nationalization of foreign-owned companies. The nadir of these tensions was reached in the 1980s with incidents like the bombing of a Berlin nightclub and the Lockerbie bombing, which led to international isolation and sanctions against Libya. 
In Africa, Gaddafi played a proactive role in promoting unity and collaboration among African nations. He envisioned a united African continent free from the influence of former colonial powers. To this end, he championed the establishment of the African Union AU, and was an advocate for creating a single African currency backed by gold. Gaddafi's initiatives were, however, met with skepticism from some African leaders who were cautious about his intentions and the feasibility of his ideas. Gaddafi's support for revolutionary movements around the world was another hallmark of his foreign policy. He provided financial and logistical aid to various anti-imperialist groups, including the Irish Republican Army IRA, the Palestine Liberation Organization PLO, and various African liberation movements. This support often drew ire from Western powers and strained Libya's relations with other countries. In the Arab world, Gaddafi's actions were often polarizing. While he portrayed himself as a champion of Arab unity, his interventions in regional conflicts sometimes had destabilizing effects. One such instance was his involvement in the Chadian-Libyan conflict, where he supported rebel groups against the Chadian government, leading to a protracted and destructive conflict. Similarly, his role in the Lebanese civil war through support for various factions complicated efforts to resolve the conflict peacefully. Gaddafi's foreign policy took an unexpected turn in the early 2000s when he announced a willingness to cooperate with the West and renounced his pursuit of weapons of mass destruction. This marked a significant shift in his international stance and led to the lifting of sanctions and a period of improved relations with Western nations. However, this détente was short-lived, as the Arab Spring in 2011 drastically altered the course of Libyan history. The Arab Spring protests that swept across the Middle East and North Africa reached Libya, leading to widespread unrest and ultimately NATO intervention. Gaddafi's brutal crackdown on protesters and rebels triggered international condemnation, resulting in a multi-sided civil war. The intervention ultimately culminated in Gaddafi's overthrow and death in October 2011. In conclusion, Muammar Gaddafi's foreign policy was marked by a unique blend of anti-imperialism, revolutionary zeal, and an ambitious pursuit of regional and global influence. His efforts to challenge Western dominance, promote African unity, and support anti-imperialist causes earned him both admiration and criticism. While some of his initiatives had positive impacts on the continent and beyond, his interventions in regional conflicts and confrontations with the West also contributed to instability. Gaddafi's legacy remains a subject of debate, with opinions varying widely on the effectiveness and consequences of his foreign policy and geopolitical engagements. Decline and Demise Muammar Gaddafi, the enigmatic and controversial leader of Libya, experienced a dramatic decline and a violent demise that shook the world. His four-decade rule was marked by a unique blend of revolutionary ideals, autocratic governance, and international intrigue. From his ascent to power in 1969 to his downfall in 2011, Gaddafi's trajectory was one of shifting allegiances, ideological fervor, and ultimately, a tumultuous end that had far-reaching consequences for Libya and beyond. Gaddafi's rise to power was rooted in a coup d'état against King Idris I in 1969. A young and charismatic military officer at the time, Gaddafi pledged to usher in a new era of social justice, nationalism, and Arab unity. He instituted a series of reforms, including the nationalization of foreign assets and the redistribution of wealth. His efforts were praised by some for lifting the country out of poverty, but his methods also alienated powerful interests, both domestically and internationally. The 1970s saw Gaddafi's attempts to reshape Libya's identity through his political philosophy known as Jamahiriya, which emphasized a direct form of participatory democracy and rejected traditional political parties. He also pursued radical foreign policy positions, supporting revolutionary movements in various parts of the world. These efforts, while appealing to certain segments of society, isolated Libya on the global stage. However, Gaddafi's decline began in the 1980s as his regime faced mounting challenges. 
The international community grew increasingly wary of his support for terrorist groups and destabilizing activities. The United States, in particular, labeled Libya as a sponsor of terrorism and imposed economic sanctions in response to the bombing of a nightclub in Berlin in 1986. Qaddafi's defiant stance further isolated the nation. In the late 1980s and 1990s, Qaddafi attempted to reposition Libya as a responsible player on the international stage. He renounced weapons of mass destruction and reached a settlement for the Pan Am Flight 103 bombing over Lockerbie, Scotland, which led to the lifting of some sanctions. These actions were met with mixed reactions, some hailed them as signs of progress, while others remained skeptical of Qaddafi's true intentions. The 21st century brought new challenges and opportunities for Qaddafi's regime. As oil prices rose, Libya experienced an economic resurgence, leading to improved living standards for many citizens. However, Qaddafi's autocratic rule, characterized by human rights abuses and a lack of political freedoms, continued to draw criticism from international human rights organizations and some Libyan dissidents. The Arab Spring, a wave of pro-democracy uprisings that swept across the Middle East in 2011, proved to be the catalyst for Qaddafi's downfall. In February of that year, inspired by successful revolutions in Tunisia and Egypt, protests erupted in Libya. What began as peaceful demonstrations demanding political reform and greater freedoms quickly escalated into a violent conflict as Qaddafi's regime cracked down on dissent. International intervention played a pivotal role in shaping the outcome of the Libyan crisis. In March 2011, the United Nations Security Council authorized a no-fly zone over Libya and authorized member states to take all necessary measures to protect civilians. This led to a NATO-led military intervention that significantly tilted the balance in favor of anti-Qaddafi forces. The civil war intensified, with rebel groups gaining ground and establishing a transitional government. Qaddafi's decline reached its climax in October 2011, when he was captured by rebel forces in his hometown of Sirte. Graphic videos circulated showing a disheveled and bloodied Qaddafi being abused by his captors. The images shocked the world and sparked debates about the ethics of such treatment of a fallen leader. Within days, Qaddafi was killed under murky circumstances. The official account indicated that he died in crossfire during a confrontation between his captors and loyalist forces, though questions surrounding the exact circumstances remain. The aftermath of Qaddafi's demise unleashed a new set of challenges for Libya. The country plunged into a period of chaos and instability, characterized by power struggles among rival factions, the proliferation of armed groups, and a humanitarian crisis. The absence of a strong central authority allowed extremist organizations like ISIS to gain a foothold in the country. Qaddafi's decline and ultimate demise serve as a cautionary tale about the complexities of power, ideology, and international relations. His rule, marked by grand ambitions and unorthodox methods, left an indelible mark on Libya and the global stage. The Arab Spring and its aftermath demonstrated the potent combination of popular movements and international intervention, and the challenges of building a stable and democratic state from the ruins of authoritarianism. In conclusion, Muammar Gaddafi's decline and demise were a culmination of his regime's internal repression, external conflicts, and the shifting sands of global politics. His story reflects the fragility of leadership built on a mixture of charisma, force, and controversial policies. Qaddafi's legacy remains a subject of debate, with some viewing him as a symbol of anti-imperialism and pan-Arabism, while others remember him for his oppressive rule and destabilizing actions. The trajectory of his rule, from revolutionary hero to international pariah, serves as a complex chapter in both Libyan and world history. Muammar Qaddafi's Legacy, A Complex and Controversial Impact Muammar Qaddafi, left behind a legacy that is both complex and controversial. Throughout his four-decade rule, Qaddafi managed to reshape his country's political, social, and economic landscape, leaving a lasting imprint on Libya and the global stage. 
From his early rise to power to his tumultuous downfall, Qaddafi's legacy is a multifaceted tale of both achievement and oppression, progress and stagnation. Qaddafi seized power in a bloodless coup in 1969, overthrowing King Idris and ending the monarchy that had ruled Libya for decades. His initial promise to bring social justice and economic prosperity resonated with many Libyans, especially the younger generation. One of his earliest achievements was redirecting the nation's oil wealth, previously controlled by foreign companies, towards domestic development projects. This move helped improve living standards for many Libyans, as Qaddafi invested in infrastructure, education, and healthcare, turning Libya into one of the more developed countries in Africa. However, Qaddafi's rule was characterized by a unique blend of socialist rhetoric and autocratic governance. He established a political system called the Jamahiriya, which aimed to distribute power to the people through people's congresses and committees. In practice, this structure often centralized power in the hands of Qaddafi and his inner circle, stifling political dissent and suppressing any form of opposition. His regime became infamous for human rights abuses, including torture, disappearances, and extrajudicial killings, leading to international condemnation and sanctions. Perhaps one of the most contentious aspects of Qaddafi's legacy is his support for international terrorism. In the 1980s, Libya was implicated in several high-profile terrorist attacks, most notably the bombing of Pan and Flight 103 over Lockerbie, Scotland, in 1988. Qaddafi's regime eventually accepted responsibility for the attack and paid reparations to the victims' families. This period of support for terrorism strained Libya's relationships with many countries and contributed to its isolation on the global stage. The turning point in Qaddafi's legacy came in 2003 when he renounced his pursuit of weapons of mass destruction, leading to improved relations with Western nations. The subsequent lifting of sanctions opened up new opportunities for Libya, including increased foreign investment and the normalization of diplomatic ties. Qaddafi's willingness to cooperate with the international community appeared to mark a shift away from his earlier confrontational stance, potentially altering his legacy from that of a pariah to that of a rehabilitated leader. However, Qaddafi's apparent transformation was short-lived. The Arab Spring, a wave of pro-democracy uprisings that swept across the Middle East and North Africa in 2011, reached Libya and triggered a brutal conflict that would ultimately seal Qaddafi's fate. Faced with widespread protests and armed rebellion, Qaddafi responded with violence, leading to a full-scale civil war. The international community intervened with a NATO-led military campaign, ostensibly to protect civilians, but the campaign quickly evolved into regime change. In October 2011, Qaddafi was captured and killed by rebel forces in his hometown of Sirte. His demise marked the end of his long and controversial rule, but it also plunged Libya into a state of chaos and fragmentation. The power vacuum left by his absence allowed various armed groups, tribal factions, and Islamist militants to vie for control, turning Libya into a failed state with weak central authority and pervasive violence. Qaddafi's legacy, therefore, is a contradictory one. On one hand, he is remembered for his initial efforts to modernize Libya and elevate its population from poverty. His ambitious infrastructure projects, such as the Great Man-Made River, aim to provide fresh water to vast desert areas, showcasing his commitment to the development of his nation. Additionally, his stance against Western imperialism and his calls for African unity resonated with some segments of the global population. On the other hand, Qaddafi's repressive regime, human rights abuses, and support for terrorism remain indelible stains on his legacy. His failure to establish robust institutions and a clear line of succession created the conditions for Libya's descent into chaos after his death. The absence of a strong state allowed human trafficking and migrant smuggling to thrive, exacerbating the Mediterranean refugee crisis. In conclusion, Muammar Gaddafi's legacy is a complex tapestry woven from both positive and negative threads. 
he reshaped Libya's trajectory, initially bringing development and modernization, but his autocratic rule, human rights violations, and controversial international actions cannot be ignored. His eventual downfall left Libya in a state of turmoil that continues to plague the country. Gaddafi's legacy serves as a reminder of the intricate interplay between leadership, governance, and the often unpredictable forces of history.